words from the Gospel read. Luke's Gospel, the 24th chapter and the 11th verse. Luke writes, But when these words sing to them, and I will tell, and they did not believe. But these words sing to them, and I will tell, and they did not believe. Think with me this morning on the subject resurrection. No, I will tell. Resurrection. No, I will tell. We come to this resurrection morning amidst the tragedy of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. The small fire at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. The reported attempt to torch St. Patrick's Catholic Cathedral in Manhattan. The burning of three African American churches in southern Louisiana. And as I woke this morning, I heard that there were four churches which were bombed in Saralanga as they led of worship today over the 300 killed and 500 injured. And yet, the radical flame of Easter is that of hope. Hope which expands beyond what the world will count as lost and irredeemable. This hope, I contend, gets sometimes lost amidst all the flowers, the new clothing, the exuberant music, the family rituals, and the Easter egg hunts. Now don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with any of that, but it obscures what and whom we celebrate, because invariably we spend so much more time with these things than the observance that brings us to this liturgical crescendo. I believe Jesus on Good Friday was dead, stone cold dead. Heart stopped, no grief. And then he was alive again, showing forth God's love in new ways. I said to you this morning if we are not overwhelmed by Easter, I'm not talking about your busyness, I'm talking about this joyful, exuberant experience. If we are not overwhelmed by Easter, what means we're not taking it seriously. Because if we take Easter seriously, it will rattle our understanding of reality. That's why we come to it with faith. Easter celebrates the astounding claim that God's love is stronger than any burden we are carrying. I don't know what it is. I'll drink this. I don't know what burdens you're carrying this morning. But Easter helps us to recognize that God's love is stronger than 
bearing any burden. Stronger than all great spirits. And stronger even than death. Resurrection, Easter, is no idle tale. It is a call to erupt with uninhibited praise to God who had the final laugh by taking the sting out of Good Friday and giving victory over death and the tomb. As the story goes, the women who went to the tomb of Jesus to complete the embalming after the Sabbath found that the stone was rolled away and the body of Jesus was missing. If you were there, I wonder what you would think. Somebody probably stole the body. Well, some of the early Christians thought that too. But the news about Jesus' resurrection some 2,000 years ago got even more intriguing as Luke tells us in his Gospel. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. This news about Jesus' resurrection 2,000 years ago may have been an idle tale to the first hearers. But today, in the year 2019, it is pivotal to the faith we profess. No wonder St. Paul says, without it, our preaching is in vain. Without it, our faith is a sham. Without it, we are false prophets in a world looking for reality and truth. Yet, it is this reality and truth that gave Peter reason to run to the tomb and saw what he saw. An empty tomb. No wonder the gospel reading ends this way by Luke today. He says, Then Peter went home amazed at what had happened. Well, Peter was reasoning in his mind. We laid him here a few days ago. Chapter 1, 
verses 3 and 5. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last It bolsters us with hope if we live it with faith. Peter therefore reminds us that Jesus' resurrection gives us hope. So if we came this morning <coughs> looking for a little hope, I hope you find it this morning. And that you can go out and face the world and say, because he lives, because he lived, I too can live tomorrow. Because he got up from death, I too can get up from any burden I am bearing because of the faith I have in Jesus Christ. It is this hope that we must harness in times like these because Jesus' resurrection is not an event to be proven. It is a mystery to be proclaimed. So we don't have to prove the resurrection by some theory or some theorem. We have to proclaim it by faith. For we walk, says St. Paul, by faith and not by sight. My prayer then is that Jesus, who rose from the dead, rise again in us as individuals. Rise in us as the church. Rise in us as a nation for good. So that we can change the hate and divisiveness into the love, peace, compassion, mercy, and welcome that promote justice, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all. It is to this resurrection that we must all gravitate as we shout. Hallelujah! 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 He is risen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, describe the meaning of the power now and for all. Of